We've been uh, listening to uh, various um, submissions from this morning and um, I've been here since this morning and sitting there amongst the audience and it just uh, fills me with horror that uh, the kind of effects that untouchability and the caste system has had on the, uh, on the people of the Indian subcontinent, people in Nigeria, Japan, etc. And when you um, look at forms of discrimination, and race obviously comes <coughs> top of the list. And uh, the world has moved on and have obviously rec recognized caste, uh, race as a form of discrimination, and every country in the world has acted, enacted some kind of law dealing with race discrimination. And when uh, people try to address the issue of caste discrimination, um, the mind balls, starts thinking, what the hell is that? And uh, it's pretty apparent that uh, it is a very difficult creature to define and to control because it is such a subtle form of discrimination that it is difficult to capture it like we capture race. There's no doubt about it that the caste system is a form of uh, graded inequality where people are pigeonholed and it's a form of social hierarchy and every person is placed in a social hierarchy and has the comfortable feeling that there is somebody below them. And as long as that thinking is there which embodies the caste systems, it is difficult to remedy that situation because the individual always finds that there is somebody below them. In a racial context, there's the issue of black and white. There's issue like we can identify people from Africa by their physical characteristics. We can identify with people from China and Japan with their physical characteristics. But caste discrimination, where people Physical characteristics are almost identical, and yet they discriminate in the most pernicious way. And that is the reason why it caste hasn't really captured the imagination of the world. That caste discrimination has been a very elusive form of discrimination that has escaped the attention of the world. I congratulate uh, this organization for um, raising this subject um, in this forum, in the international forum. And uh, I have been involved with this issue of untouchability and caste-based discrimination for decades. And we have had numerous conferences in Britain, in, in the States, uh, in Europe, dealing with this issue. And issues are taken to the highest level, the United Nations, intergovernment, dialogues take place, a lot of discussions occur, money gets assigned, but we don't know where it gets spent. And Yogesh Varhade, he's, uh, I think, he's taking a nap. He was here um, in year 2000 when uh, I raised the subject of caste discrimination in Britain. <coughs> and um, after I raised the subject in a plat on, in a plat on a public, on a pl public platform, I began to receive death threats. A lot of um, orthodox sections of the so-called Hindu religion um, tried to sort of um, threaten me, and threaten to kill me. And anyone who picks up this issue of caste with which the Hindu faith is, has a, an integral link will be a target. Let me give you an example. Uh, as Bhagwan Singh has said, that um, caste system is here, and he's given an indication how it functions here. There is a, um, a thriving Asian media in this country, <coughs> television and radio. And uh, recently there was a, there's a program called um, uh, Br uh, Broken Silence on British Asia, where the presenter raised the subject of caste discrimination in this country. And as that program was a public debate about caste discrimination. 
And once the program concluded, the presenter of the program began to receive death threats. We were going to have a debate on Sunrise, uh, Sunrise TV, where a journalist was interested in the subject of caste discrimination occurring in Britain and tried to give it a public broadcast. It was going to be occurring on a Tuesday. We got a telephone call on the Monday evening to say that the program has been cancelled. Sun did not rise. Yogesh and Tina were indicating that when legislation is moved forward, there are powerful forces come up and try and divert the attention. Dealing with caste is not an easy issue and I will not go into discussions about race. What I will say about race is that due to the migration of a lot of people into this country, the British government enacted laws to deal with racial discrimination from the 60s, 70s, 80s. And at every stage when it is seen that there is a problem, it has done something, it has recognized that racial discrimination, <coughs> gender discrimination, disability discrimination, discrimination in all its different aspects, the government has acknowledged, acknowledged and it has always tried to take action. They've got the Human Rights uh, Act, Commission for Equality and Human Rights is in place. Then they are now looking at the single equality bill, trying to combine and bring together all the disparate forms of discrimination in this country into a single act. With that in view, I am a chairman of Caste Watch UK and we have been pro uh, campaigning against caste-based discrimination for the last few years. <coughs> and uh, with the work we did with the Dalit Solidarity Network, we made a submission to government that caste ought to be included into the single equality bill. And lo and behold, it fell on deaf ears. Subsequent, subsequent to that, we discovered that there was a lot of there was a powerful force operating. There's always the, the hidden force which tries to put a stop to what you're trying to do in terms of dealing with this form of discrimination. And that hidden force came to light in the form of the Hindu Council UK and the Hindu Forum of Britain. And uh, instead of acknowledging that there is a problem of caste, which they will never acknowledge, for the reason that it forms part of their faith. If you deal with this in a legal way, somehow they feel that their religion will be undermined, their religion will collapse. And to a degree, they are right. So we have a big, big fight on our hand. And I believe that this meeting here today should not be the beginning and the end of what you're trying to do. It should be the beginning of something. And there must be an end to this form of discrimination. In terms of race, yes, there are parallels here. But the subtleties are so sophisticated that we have to recognize that caste is a form of discrimination as distinct from race that caste needs to be given the attention that it has been neglected, that we need to come forward and move together in solidarity so that this matter, which affects hundreds of millions of people around the world, is addressed appropriately, adequately, diligently, with solidarity. It is no good coming together and having a conference and having a chit chat and making all the wonderful speeches which we are capable of making. I have not prepared anything. I have been asked to just to address the audience and I do so with a great passion. And I urge the organizers, organizers and those who are, here, who are here to come forward and join us in that campaign to establish the dignity of the individual and a uh, lot of have been said about Dr. Medhika. Variously, every speaker has mentioned something about him. Yes, he is an icon. We can rally up around what he did, but he's no longer with us. But what we can do, to listen to the message that he gave, 
And the message he gave was that no society can progress without the intellectual class. It is the intellectual class which can show the light and the way. One of the tragedies of the, the so-called Dalits, the untouchables, has been that they have not been able to articulate a leadership, haven't been able to get that intellectual prowess that we need to bring this agenda onto the World Forum. And we look to this organization in the form of humanism, which has a bright future, has a bright future because at least your mind is in the right place, that we look to this kind of organization where the intellectual power base is there to utilize that strength and once for all get together and fight out this evil on the world stage. And I will say no longer than that. Thank you very much. Thank you.